Hi, my name is Michael Dell. I'm a Gunawage Rono living with special needs. When I was interviewed, I had an idea for a show for people from Gunawage living with disabilities. Today is the start of that show, Walk in My World. Often, people with disabilities lead sheltered lives and their interactions are limited to caregivers and family members. I hope this show will bring you awareness of these people, their families, their lives, and their dreams for the future. Welcome back to another episode of Walk in My World. Today we will be looking at a mother-son relationship and how, how the, connect, the connection meets when the mother is also the primary caregiver with uh, guest host Garba Gatste. What konuradu ganawage hrono. It's an honor for me to be here today as a guest host. If you remember back about two years ago, I had done an interview with Michael where we looked at how it is to live with cerebral palsy in the community. And today we're going to be taking a different look at it in terms of the relationship between the mother and the son when the mother is the primary caregiver of someone with a physical disability. So we'll go ahead and start with uh, Lois. Lois Dallas is Michael's mom. And if we just go back to when Michael was a child and you were, he was first diagnosed with cerebral palsy, had you ever heard of that prior to him being diagnosed? Uh, prior, no, I never heard of uh, cerebral palsy until he was diagnosed. Uh, his doctor that took care of him at uh, Children's Hospital, that's where we learned everything and he explained. Right away he was right diagnosed? Right away, yeah, okay. he was, yeah. So you've received the diagnosis, you have a little bit of the education. Do you find that your parenting style had to change because of Michael's physical disability? Well, no, not that much. No, the other uh, children at home, like they went right into it and they helped. I wasn't alone. Yeah. Okay. Michael, do you remember as a child playing or, or see, having your brothers and sister around? And do you remember? Uh, yes. At the time uh, when we were growing up, my dad uh, worked away, so we only uh, seen him on the weekend. So they had to uh, really kick in to help my mother out during the week to, in terms of my care and stuff like that. And, you know, so it wasn't all left to her. They each had to pitch in and help out where they could. Do you think that Michael um, had the same treatment as the rest of the family or did he have to get, was he treated special? No, he special wasn't or? treated special. No, he, got, he was treated like the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I said, he was special, but... <laughs> Not too special. Yeah. <laughs> and what about as he as he was growing now? Um, did he have more doctor's appointments per se, or special things that took you out of the home for treatment or anything? Oh like that? yeah, he went through uh, quite a bit of treatment. He started at uh, the children's hospital, and he had to take uh, physiotherapy every day. Yeah. Okay. Because when he was born, like his balance was. You know, he couldn't sit by himself. Mm -hmm. So that's where they started at the children's. I brought him there every day for his physiotherapy. And then once that was done, then he moved on to uh, Mackay Center. But then he still needed that physiotherapy. So he continued over there. It's quite remarkable because you, you spend um, so much time um, with doctors and specialists and physiotherapy and even up to today, you know, every once in a while you have to see an OT and just like a uh, common practice for me. At that time when he was small, a small child, was there resources in the community to help with dealing with cerebral palsy? Not at that time, no, there was no resources. So you had to go outside. You had to go on the outside and more or less do everything on your own. Eh? So when you look at from then to today, there's an increase in resources. Oh yeah, look at the increase they have today. You know they have uh, all this uh, 
what is it like home care you know they come in and do a lot of stuff for you you know mm -hmm. but in those days I didn't have that kind of help so looking at your relationship with Michael as his mother and as his caregiver how do you define that relationship we do have a close uh, relationship but there's times when we buy heads you know he'll go in his room he's you know he's got his space there and so once he comes out, then we re, we resolve it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but usually it works out good, you know. Yeah. So you works. find your own space. Yeah, we your find own. our own space. Yeah. And I won't say that she's all uh, totally totally stuck in the home. If we find out properly, then we can work around those details so she's not stuck in the home. There is a sense of dependency, but there's a sense of she can go if she needs to go somewhere. So on that topic of finding your own space, mm -hmm. and you have other children who grew up and they moved into their own homes, moved on in their lives. Mm -hmm. Has that thought ever came up of where Michael could possibly live on his own? Or, possibly, or yeah. It came up uh, plenty of times, you know. Mm -hmm. within, we, within the past little while, yeah, it's yeah. come up because... Because Michael often talks about maybe one day they would have like a place, you know, something like a we call ILC, where they live in there, okay, and yeah, they are yeah. being taken care of. And that's what he thought about, maybe one day they would maybe have something like that. Yeah. Maybe he would be willing to go and live there, you know? Mm -hmm. But still having that, you know, family connection, mm -hmm. you know, where she comes and, you know, that's all the appointments, but we don't live together. Mm -hmm. So on a daily basis, how many hours would you say you are together? Is it 24 hours or...? Michael, I think, has programming, right? That yeah, well, he's here from uh, 9 to 12 at the learning set. I could go to the young adults program, but it's only by choice that because they finish so early that, you know, it's to get moved and get moved again, I just choose to go home and mm -hmm. stay home because it's easier. The summertime, he's at uh, Camp Asawipi. And the other one is... Camp Papillon. Yeah. Okay. So he's gone for part of the summer. So that gives you That's a nice break respite. to rejuvenate, yeah. re-energize. Yeah. Do my own thing. So Michael, you had mentioned that there are some hours during the day where your mother has a break. She can go off on her own and you're here at the learning center. You want to just tell us like, what are some of the activities that you're doing while you're here? While I'm here, uh, I take uh, English, math, uh, and uh, careers, all basic uh, subjects. Everything I do is on computer. So, you know, all my programs are basically on the computer. And uh, we have uh, working, the teacher works individually with us. Well, not exactly individually, but she each gives us a little bit of her, her time to walk us through whatever subject we're doing. So we might be doing, uh, for English, we may be doing our reading on the books. One one day, the next day, it may be English on the computer. And then it may be um, English on the board, actually putting the words together and sounding it out. And I also take uh, French here. So I have a very, busy three hours when I'm here Monday through Friday. So do you feel like because Michael has this disability, do you think that over the over the years you were an overprotective mother in terms of letting Michael go to do activities or to go to camp, you know, how was that letting him go? At first I wasn't really I don't know. She wasn't really I wasn't, really I wasn't sure of uh, you know, letting mm -hmm. him go because he was very young and they when they start sending the forms out and... How old was that? About eight? Yeah, a little About bit, eight? yeah. So what were you afraid of in, in letting him go? What were your concerns or...? I wasn't ready Afraid to he let would him get hurt, hurt or and... that he'd be... Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to let him go. Okay. Yeah. And what happened when you did? What was that first experience like for both of you, Michael? Do you remember the first time you went away to Well, camp? when when, uh, when her and my dad talked about it, um, that I wanted to go, um, they picked the shortest schedule that was possible within the, within the program because 
you have to realize that when you're when you're when uh, you're eight, you could get homesick. Is what, what would happen to me. So um, when when I went, it wasn't a good experience for the first time. But as I continued to go, I began to get better because the school would say, "At Makai, you have to get to, you have to try and do something because." When you get older, it's not going to be easy to separate if you don't separate now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we de we decided to take a jump for it and just try <laughs> it. I can't think of not passing a summer without it. So Michael, looking in looking into your life and looking back, are there any moments in your life that stand out as special or any specific memory or event that happened that you think back, wow, I accomplished that or I did that? Um, getting getting a motorized wheelchair at eight, at eight years old. It wasn't only giving you the chair. It was like, uh, oh, so you had to learn how to transfer in and transfer in and out of it, mm -hmm. and get back into it, out of it. And I told the guy, I said, I can't do this. He said, Oh, come on, you have cerebral palsy. You're a Mohawk, you know. You, your, your people can uh, climb to, uh, big buildings. How come you can't transfer from a chair to... I'm like, I, I can't. He said, I can't do this. And he's like, if you can't do this, then you're not going to be able to do anything anything that you want to do in life. So wow. he said, you have to be able to do this. So about, it was about six weeks before the end of school. And we're coming to uh, summer break. He said, okay, you're going to that camp. That's all they're going to teach you how to do. And I went back, he said, okay, let's see what you can do. You had your whole summer, let's see what you can do. I was able to do it. And then he, he was happy. He said, then next you're going to be able to do anything that you want in life. How do you find Michael uh, in terms of his motivation? Is he a motivator? He seems to be. I mean, he's doing the show very well. He's going to school, he's learning. Is he self-motivated or do you have to kind of push him into oh, no. things? He's self-motivated. Yeah. Very strong. He does his own thing. He's very strong in those areas, yeah.